Hi everybody, welcome back. We're gonna do something a little different today. I've had some sort of uh, questions, comments about choosing how to use paper in the project. Um, so I'm gonna, we're gonna look at some paper collections today and go through them and I'm gonna talk about how I would use them. In other words, um, how I decide what project I'm going to do with those or what size book I'm going to make with them um, and why. And that might help you a little bit in deciding in your projects. And of course, this is just how I do it. You could do it completely differently. But let's get started. And first we're gonna look at some Prima papers. This is Moonchild. And the first thing I do when something is in a pad like this where it has six designs and you get four sheets of each, is I will take out one of each sheet just to make it easier to look at them side by side to see um, to see them clearly. Now, I'll have a ruler handy. And the first thing I'm gonna do is look through the paper and see if anything on any sheet jumps out at me as something that I really, really wanna feature or use on a cover or don't wanna cut um, or inspires me in some way. So this is a sheet of cut aparts. Nothing here would, would say to me, you know, make me the focus of this book. The back is essentially what we would consider a, a solid type. There's nothing here that I would um, use. I mean, I'm gonna use it, but it's not gonna dictate the book. Uh, same thing here, cut aparts. Nothing here to dictate the book. Uh, this is really spectacular. However, it's really tall. It's, um, I think it's like nine or 10 inches tall or something. Eight and a half, nine by the time you get the whole thing. I'm not gonna make a book that big. So, and I don't mind cutting this. It is four inches wide, four and a quarter. So that's fine. I, almost anything I make would probably be that wide and I have no problem cutting it. So that's not gonna dictate the size of the book. This page is a little bit more interesting. Um, nothing um, super jumps out at me. I quite like this section right here. But I'm not so fond of that tape. However, it's small enough. You know, it's not even four inches wide by five inches tall. Um, so this would go in almost any size book that I would make. And then the back again is a tone on tone, so nothing there. These are cut aparts. The only thing here that's sort of, I mean, I like a lot of these, but they're small and I probably will make a bigger book than any of these. I do quite like this if I wanted to do something horizontal. So that's something to bear in mind. But again, it's four and a half, five, four, yeah, four and a half. So again, that's probably not gonna dictate the book. Usually when I'm going through, um, something will just leap off the page if it's going to influence the book that much. This isn't all over, not, no issue here. This has a couple of areas of interest. We have this up here which might make a nice cover for a horizontal book. So that's something to think about. That would be about a five and a half inch by four and a quarter. So that would make a nice size for a horizontal book in this section also. But when you turn it over, that's another story. There's a couple of things happening here that could definitely influence the size of the book, okay? The first thing that jumped out at me was this circle. I think it's beautiful. And like a five inch square book would accommodate that full circle on the cover. You could do five inch pages on the inside and still easily, or even four and, four and a quarter, about four and a half, four and three quarters and get this whole circle. So that's something to think about, definitely. Uh, the other would be this, um, what says the fortune teller. I'm, I don't care that much about that, but if 
if you really, that's something that might influence the size of a book. If you wanted that to be your theme maybe for the book and put that on the cover, you'd need to make sure that the book was at least five and a quarter inches wide. And then the other thing, the one that I quite like a lot is this as a cover. My only qualm about it with this paper, the size is fine and make a nice small vertical book, but it doesn't really convey what you would end up seeing on the inside of the book if this was the cover. It's kind of an odd, um, odd sort of design compared to the rest of this very um, spacey sort of um, foiled stuff. So that's what I'm thinking with this paper. Is something from this page is most likely going to influence either front or back how I make the book. But something else happened that may affect that. And let me show you by pulling out the next paper. So this again is Moonchild. So I also have from Primo. These are still available. You should be able to buy them. This is Spring Farmhouse. It's brand new. Love it. So let's pull out, again, I separated out the papers. And right off the bat, we have this. Now, let me pull this over. As you can see, it's slightly bigger. But this is the exact same background as this. They just put slightly different. I mean, this one's got a butterfly. This one's got a bee. This has a little floral spray here. This has a little arrangement here. But they're very, very similar. So I could use this as the cover for a book made of this paper. And then, so I, then I would not use it here and I would end up using either this or maybe that or one of these horizontal pieces. Okay. So let's look a little bit more at this one. And again, this obviously jumped out at me. Uh, this little design here is wonderful. I'm still leaning towards that as a possible cover. That's um, just a tone on tone. These are just cut aparts, much smaller design. The bunnies are adorable, but again, nothing to influence the size of the book. Uh, I like this, but it's cut off. For some reason, it's not centered, so that's a non-starter. This right here, though, if you use both of these for a cover, would be really nice. Um, this would also be really nice. Um, this one, where it says Cuisine artist Artistique, uh, would be nice, especially if you're doing a, um, a cookbook. Um, so it's quite a bit on here to think about. Nothing there. Uh, looking there. So that's, so it's almost certainly going to be this. Or this one. Okay. And this would be, pardon me, a six by four and a quarter. This would be well, slightly bigger at four and a half by seven, six, you could get away with six and a half if you wanted both of those. So that's how I would use this paper and that's what would dictate this particular paper. So these are kind of easy, there's not a whole lot um, you know, you just go through, find what you like, and work from there. Like, it's almost, you you know, there's almost always something on the paper that's going to tell me what to make. But, I say almost, because not always. Now, here's another Prima paper. This is lavender. I didn't take the pages out, but we'll do just a quick flip through. This book, uh, this collection, nothing in this collection jumps out and says... You know, I need to be this size, you need to put me on the cover. 
it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It's, you know, it's pretty. But there's no standout design here. Um, I mean, unless you wanted to put that on the cover, I guess. So this paper, you're free basically do whatever you want. It's, it doesn't, nothing there is going to dictate what you do. On the other hand, this is Alice by Stamperia. This is the kind of paper that I will look at over and over and over again before I make my decision. So let's take a quick look. Um, yeah, this is amazing. Obviously, you know, you look at that and you want to make a 12 by 12 book. But how tall is Alice? Let's take a look at that. She is six inches tall. So I'm almost certainly when I make this book going to make it at least six inches tall to accommodate this. And notice also that this page is very vertical. A lot of the design on this page is vertical. That's something to look at when you're looking at, in particular, Stamperia, Stamperia, I don't know how to say it, um, Graphic 45 to a certain degree. Um, I have found that they will, um, they will lean to, to particularly vertical or horizontal designs, and that can dictate your book. So again, here's our, the beautiful bunny. There's, it's the March Hare, right? Again, six inches will accommodate him. Vertical. All of these cut aparts are vertical. So as I go through, I can tell this is going to be a vertical book. I'm not gonna make a horizontal book out of this. Or square, it might be square. And these are five and a half inches tall. So again, we're looking at a book that's six inches tall, give or take. Okay, this is pretty much an all over, so no big deal. But this is nice. I'm gonna make sure you use that. And now things get a little interesting because we have these, which are certainly gonna be more than six inches. Yeah, these are six and five eighths. Um, but they're bookmarks, so they and they have tabs at the top, so they could stick out. That's okay. Now, these are all fine, but this, which is spectacular, is really big. It's seven and a quarter by five and a quarter. And what's on the back? And it's really pretty on the back. I think the most I could cut off would be these two polka dot sides. That would get it down to six and three quarters. All right, so let's remember that, six and three quarters. Okay, now here's a horizontal design, and it's beautiful. So probably, if I measure again, six inches will be fine, although you might be cutting off a little of this. So if I go to six and three quarters, or even seven, which I don't like to do, that seems big, but six and three quarters is pretty good. And what did I say this was? Six and three quarters. Okay. So what we could do is make a book six and three quarters to seven inches tall and use this piece, uh, use this as a, a side pocket insert or an insert of some sort. So that would accommodate that. This is certainly going to be wider than anything I would want to use, but eight and a half. I would run this across two pages, mat it, and, and use half on one page, half on the other. Or do a fold out where it folds out to display the entire image. Here we have cut aparts again, and these are five and a half. It's an all over design. This is wonderful. Again, these are all, everything's in the six inch range. Cards, and then that's the back. Okay, so it looks to me that it's 
this is what's going to dictate the book. If I don't want to cut this up, then my book needs to be seven inches tall. And if this is seven inches tall, now a book that's seven inches tall is a fairly big book for me anyway. I tend to make pretty small books. So that's going to take a fair bit of paper, but that's okay because I have two of these. All right, so if it's seven inches tall, then you just have to decide how wide. So maybe five by seven, which is kind of a standard sort of two inches narrower than it is tall. Um, so that's probably what I'm going to do there. And that's um, how I came to the decision is to look through, let the paper tell you um, what it wants to be. And let's look at one more. And this is another area. I've actually already made an album with this paper. And, oh, sorry, crinkle, crinkle. But I only used one, so I didn't use the other one. And I found this paper to be less uh, aggressive in its design than the Alice. Um, there was this bike that I liked quite a lot, but it wasn't going to kill me to cut it. Um, it's five and change wide. These are beautiful, and again, they're like five and a half, give or take. So, uh, at least big enough to accommodate these. And these, same thing. You know, these are five and three quarters. Uh, I love this ship, so this would be something I might want to accommodate, except that it's really, really big. You know, it's like six and a half inches wide by five and a half inches tall. This is really nice. That would make a nice cover. Uh, this envelope, you know, keep coming back to five and a half as a dimension for this paper. Something large enough to accommodate that. And this, and that's that. So this is a much easier paper. As I mentioned, it's a, what I would call a less aggressive paper than the Alice that we just looked at. This paper, you've got a lot more options, unless, and, and there's, no, there's no law, you can do whatever you like. There's no reason that you couldn't cut Alice and make something shorter or you know not use this in full or use this and cut it in half um, across two pages the way I talked about this which would be just fine um, you know if you're gonna do that you're gonna lose this anyway so it doesn't matter because you're gonna glue it down as a mat you know then you could make something you know what is this seven and a quarter so like three and three quarters then you could make something four by four by five and a half or six, five and a half really. Um, you know, you don't have to keep things whole. Uh, I happen to think this is beautiful and want to keep it whole, so it's going to dictate the size. This image right here is going to dictate the size of the book for me. So that's kind of how I make my decision before I ever get started of what size book to make. Um, I let the paper tell me, unless like the lavender collection that I showed you earlier, there's nothing in it to dictate size. I can use whatever size I want. Um, but that's pretty much how I do it. If you have any questions about this process um, or you want to see more, uh, you know, if maybe take one of these collections and make a book with it and show you how I come up with how I'm going to do it, I'd be more than happy to do that. Just uh, comment down below and let me know. So thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time.